Hello everyone! Welcome to another session, another Sunday of Feast at Home here in Feast Bikuta. My name is Brother Velden Lim and I'm happy to welcome you to the happiest place, space online. Alam nyo, nakakamiss yung live na feast, no? pero thanks be to God, there's technology. We are able to do this through this online platform, through Facebook and through YouTube. By the way, before we begin, if you haven't clicked the share button, please do so. Because this talk, this feast will be mind-blowing and life-changing. And believe that the Lord will move in your life today. So I want you to share it on your timelines. Bakit? Kasi baka meron kang kaibigan na nangangailangan nitong salita ng Diyos natin sa araw na ito. Amen? And to start off this feast, alam nyo, I'd like to also greet you. Happy Feast Day of Santo Nino. Alam nyo, uh, nakakatuwa ng Feast of Santo Nino. It's all about children. And my prayer today is that you will have faith like children. Ano ba ang mga bata? Ang mga bata kasi, kapag ka meron silang gusto at meron silang dasal, naniniwala sila, full trust sa kanilang mga magulang. And that's my prayer for you today. What's your prayer intention? What do you need from the Lord? Ano yung pinagdarasal mo? I want you to have a childlike faith, fully trusting in the Lord, knowing fully well that the Lord will deliver. Ganun ang bata eh, di ba? So, uh, alam nyo, speaking of prayers and expectations, last week, yan, di ba't yan ang pinag-usapan natin? Our one big message last week is all about God is bigger than your expectations. And I don't know about you, did God really uh, went beyond your expectations this week? And here's what I would like you to do. Gusto ko umpisahan natin itong araw na ito na merong pagpapasalamat, merong gratitude, merong gratefulness sa puso natin. So, I'd like to ask you this question and I would like you to write down and comment down below the answer to this question. Ready? Ito yung tanong ko. I want you to name one unexpected blessing from the Lord. Yung, yung blessing na meron kang ini-expect tapos hinigitan pa ni Lord yung expectation mo. Yun na gusto kong ilagay mo sa comment section na ito. So, I want you to write down your answers. I'll give you time to write your answers right now. Again, name one unexpected blessing na hinigitan pa ni Lord yung expectation mo. For example, ako, let me share mine. Sa akin, alam nyo, itong past week, um, sa aking negosyo, sa aking negosyo, sa buy and sell, meron kaming target na sana maubos yung binibenda namin sa sakyan. And here's the thing, feeling namin hindi namin maubos kami ng mga partners ko. Tapos, the wonderful thing about it is this, I was expecting God, kasi ito yung talk natin, di ba? Lord, we need to sell around 85 cars. And, and, and I was praying to the Lord, Lord, I, I know, I believe, I expect that you are going to let us sell 85 cars. Hindi lang alam sa namin kung ano yung mga buyers namin. But you know what happened? Si, si Lord, hindi lang 85 cars yung, 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 yung pinabenta sa amin. Alam nyo, dinagdagang pa niya. Meron bagong na-award sa amin. Sampung kotse pa. At naubos din namin yun. And at the end of this week, I was just praying to the Lord, Lord, tunay ka nga. You are true to your word. That yes, I have this expectation. But your, your, your blessings, your grace is so much bigger than what I expect. How about you? What is your unexpected blessing? Alam nyo, nakakatuwa ito, no? yung, yung you are declaring God's goodness. You are thanking God. You, at nakikita ng ibang tao. Kasi maaaring meron mga ibang tao nanonood ngayong feast at home. Tapos feeling nila, bakit ganun? Parang walang biyaya sa akin. Let me tell you this. Alam nyo, ang Diyos nagmimilagro pa rin. Hanggang ngayon, kailangan lang natin makita. Amen? Thank you for your answers. Ang daming blessings. Nakakatuwa, di ba? Talagang, it, it's filling our hearts with hope. Hi, nako. Napakaraming blessings. Thanks be to God. And that's what I want to happen today at the feast. We start off with gratitude. Kasi, that's the thing. We are always blessed. We are always blessed. But the key to happiness is gratitude. Amen? Now, I'd like to welcome you to our continuation of our series, Rhythms of Grace. Find rest in a God of love. And our talk title for today, we are already in talk to, is this, A Road That Gives Rest. Ayan, shout out sa mga napapagod sa buhay dyan, na burn out na. This talk 
is for you. But before we dive deeper into the talk, can I invite you to prayer? Let's pray our favorite prayer here at the feast. Together, let's make the sign of our faith in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lift your hands and pray this with me. All together, today, I receive all of God's love for me. Today, I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today, I open myself to God's Word so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today, I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's honor God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Brothers and sisters, we are still in Matthew and we are at Matthew 11. And here in Matthew 11, Alam nyo, Matthew is describing three kinds of responses to Jesus. Merong iba-ibang mga tao, iba-ibang reaction kay Jesus. Yung iba positive, yung iba negative, yung iba neutral. Yung iba sinundan siya, yung iba in-unfriend siya, yung iba sin zone lang, di ba? And last week, we have talked about those people with a neutral response. Like doubting John the Baptist. Yes, you heard me right. John the Baptist, yung naniwala, who prepared the way for Jesus, siya yung nagduda kay Jesus. But last week, I love that message, di ba? Kasi sinabi natin last week that it's okay that you, if you have doubts too, kung nagdududa ka, kasi si John the Baptist nga, nagduda din kay Jesus. But here's the beautiful thing that we said last week, that even if you doubt God, the beautiful thing is that God never doubted you. Hindi nagduda sa iyo ang Diyos. Alam ng Diyos, naniniwala siya sa kakayahan mo. And today, we happen to be talk, we would like to talk about those with a negative response. And itong nakakalungkot, sa dami ng ginawa ni Jesus, entire towns were rejecting Jesus. And our one big message for, the, for, for today is this. I want you to read it with me. Your burden fits you well. Ulitin ko. Your burden fits you well. Sa Tagalog, mas maganda ito. Bagay sa iyo ang pasanin mo. Ayan, di ba? But I'd like to jump off, jump off with our word for today. It's in Matthew 11, verses 20 to 21 and 23. Then later on, we will continue it. Read this with me all together. Then Jesus began to denounce the towns where he had done so many of his miracles because they had not repented of their sins and turned to God. What sorrow awaits you, Chorazin and Bethsaida? For if the miracles I did in you had been done in wicked Tyre and Sidon, their people would have repented of their sins long ago. And you, people of Capernaum, will you be honored in heaven? No, you will go down to the place of the dead. For if the miracles I did for you had been done in wicked Sodom, it would still be here today. See, my dear brothers and sisters, what's happening here? See, Jesus, he performed many miracles in front of the Jews. Ito ang problema. Marami sa kanila ang hindi naniwala kay Jesus. Kaya nung sabi ni Lord, alam niyo, sabi ni Lord, Alam niyo, kung sa fire, sa Sidon, at sa Sodom kung ginawa yung mga milagro na yan, ay malamang nagrepent na sila at nagbagong buhay at hindi bumagsak yung mga lugar na yun. Kung ginawa doon. And if you were an ancient Jew listening to Jesus, ma-eskandalo ko sa sinasabi ni Jesus. In fact, hindi ka lang ma-eskandalo. Ma-iinsulto ka pa. Bakit? Because Jesus compared three Jewish towns to three Gentile towns. Tandaan nyo ang mga Hudyo, napaka-nationalistic ng mga yan. Ayaw na ayaw nila na, na kukumpara sa mga Gentiles because for them, Gentiles are dirty, are different people. They think they are more superior than the Gentiles. And you see, Jesus said He performed many miracles in three Jewish, Jewish towns. Ano yung mga binanggit doon? Yung Chorazin, Bethsaida, tsaka Capernaum. Pero ito ang problema. Hindi sila nga naniwala kay Jesus. 
at hindi rin sila nagrepent at nagbago. Now, anong significance itong Chorazin, Bethsaida, at Capernaum? Eh, tong tatlong ito, kinumpara niya kasi to three Gentile towns. And not just any Gentile town. Alam nyo, kapag nakumpara sa Gentile town, insulto na nga yun eh. Pero ito, kinumpara ni Jesus yung tatlong towns na yun sa Tyre, Sidon, tsaka Sodom. Ano tong tatlong ito? Alam nyo, these were three of the most notorious non-Jewish cities in the Bible. These were the wicked cities and they are famous for what? Famous sila, sikat sila sa kanilang idolatry. And if you were living in Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, ito ang tanong ko sa inyo. Anong mararamdaman mo kung sinabi ni Jesus sa iyo, Uy, mas malupit pa kayo, mas malala pa kayo sa you are worse than Tyre, Sidon, and Sodom. Ay, siguro may insulto ka rin. Matitrigger ka rin. Pero eto eh, triggered na si Jesus. Galit na siya. Why? Here's the problem. Because miracles abound in the midst of the Jews, yet they still refuse to believe and repent and change their ways. Kapatid, isn't that our problem? The miracles are there. The blessings are there. In fact, the miracle maker is in our midst. The blessing giver is within us, with us. And yet, we still don't believe. We still fail to see it. We still fail to appreciate it. Maybe because our definition of a blessed life is far more different from what they have, from what we have at the moment. Ito ang gusto kong sabihin sa iyo, ha? Minsan, nagre-reklamo tayo, nakakainis itong boss ko. But I want you to start with gratitude. Galit ka sa boss mo, nainis ka sa boss mo, be grateful. Why? Kasi ibig sabihin may trabaho pa ba? Tama? Nainis ka sa asawa mo. I want you to be grateful. Bakit? Because that's the dream of many singles out there. Yung magka-asawa, magka-jowa nga lang yung iba, eh, di ba? You are too stressed with your kids. Please be grateful. Because not everyone gets the chance to have one. Amen? What's my point, my dear brothers and sisters? You see, no amount of blessing is enough for an ungrateful heart. No miracle is beautiful for an unappreciative heart. The miracle maker is in your midst. Everything you need is within your reach. You just need to appreciate it. Start with gratitude. Amen? Can I invite you to prayer? Close your eyes, bow down your heads, put your hands over your chest, and say this prayer after me. Jesus, forgive me for the times I failed to recognize the miracles you're doing for me. Open my eyes that I may see your goodness, faithfulness, and favor. You're my miracle maker. You alone are enough. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's honor God's word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Woo! God will give you real rest today para sa mga pagod ang talk na ito. And you see, I just talked about um, gratitude. And one day, meron isang feaster lumapit sa akin. Sabi niya, Brother Velden, meron po akong tanong sa inyo. Sabi niya, how do you know that a Christian is maturing? Paano mo daw malalaman kung nagmamature na ang isang Kristiyano? And here's my answer to her. Sabi ko sa kanya, the answer is this, generosity. And why do I say this? You know you are maturing in faith if you are getting more generous. And I'm talking about generos- generosity not just with your money, not just with your tithes or your love offering. Ang tanong ko sa inyo ito, are you getting more generous with your time, with your praise, your words, and with your presence? Eh, kasi yun ang telltale sign na ikaw ay nagmamature, napapalapit, nagiging mas kamukha ni Kristo. Kasi tandaan niyo to si Kristo, He's a generous God. In fact, He gave His life for you and me. 
just for us to have life and have it in abundance. So generosity is one of the greatest indicators of maturing in faith. Now, some people are asking me, but Brother Ben, then how can I be generous? Ang sagot ko ito, you need to start with gratitude. Why? Because gratitude leads to generosity. And alam niyo, maraming mga tao kaya sila takot magbigay. Kasi feeling nila, hindi sila blessed enough. Pero itong gusto kong sabihin sa inyo, kung matututo kang magpasalamat, alam mo, marirealize mo na napaka-blessed mo. And when you realize how blessed you are, you cannot help but give. Makikita mo yung mga tao mas nangangailangan sa'yo. Makikita mo na nangangailangan ang maraming tao ng tulong mo. And you see, my dear brothers and sisters, our aim as Christians is to be like Jesus. And Jesus is generosity personified. In fact, generosity is not just what God does. Generosity is who God is. So why am I sharing this to you, my dear friends? Alam nyo, I encourage you to keep on being generous. And if you feel like you are blessed enough, ay nako, it's time to give back. And we will give you opportunities here at the Feast. If you want to give, if you want to practice generosity, um, you can actually give to our ministry. You can give to the Lord through the Feast. And here are different channels to help sustain what we are doing here at the Feast. Alam niyo, maraming maraming salamat sa mga nagbibigay. If those, if, thank you for those who are continuously giving. If you want to give, if it's your first time to give, here are the ways to give. First, you can give through credit card or PayPal. The details are flashed here on the screen. Ayan, you can go to feastalabang.com slash give and then the instructions are there as well. Another method is this. You can actually give as well through bank transfer. You can you can, you can can give through East West Bank. You can deposit it at Light of Jesus Family, Mega Manila, Feast Alabang District 8. And just put your account number on the screen. And you can also give through BDO and Gcash. Ayan po ang account number natin. Alam nyo, napakaraming paraan para po tayong magbigay. And I love saying this. I always say this. Um, um, generosity always finds a way. Greed always finds an excuse. And I thank you for those people who are always finding ways, bank transfer, online. And because of you, we get to continue what we are doing here at the Feast. Ito ah, pansinin nyo, di ba? Mas malinaw ba yung camera natin ngayon? Uh, yung, yung kuha ko ngayon, di ba? Kita nyo yung pinballs ko, di ba? Yung bako-bako sa... Kita nyo yung oily ng mukha ko. Bakit? Because, because of your generosity. We are able to buy two new cameras for our live stream so that mas mas maganda yung 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 labas yung online feast natin and i hope you are enjoying this experience para mas klaro yung dating ng salita ng Dios sa atin all this is possible because of your generosity again on behalf of feast bikutan family i'd like to thank you for your generosity and for continuously supporting our ministry amen Live life with gratitude so that you can live life with generosity. Amen? Now, gusto kong mag-dive. Gusto kong pasukan na natin itong talk natin ngayon kasi God has a special message for all of us today. Now, balikan ko lang yung story na binasa natin kanina. Na, Andun na tayo, binasa natin wherein Jesus performed many miracles and the sad part is people in those Jewish towns did not believe. And Jesus scold, scolded them. Pinagalitan sila ni Jesus. Ang tanong ito, bakit galit na galit si Jesus? What was Jesus doing? In fact, Jesus was trying to call them to do three things. And that's what I'll be sharing to you today. The first thing that Jesus is trying to call them to do is this. Jesus is calling you and them to remove your masks. Remove your mask. Nakamask ka ba? Naalala ko itong story na ito one day. Pero isang kaibigan, umating kami ng kasal. Tapos, unfortunately, nung, nung isosot na niya yung kanyang pantalon, na hindi nakakot and tie, di ba? Sosot niya yung kanyang pantalon nung nag-CR siya, tapos, tapos zipper niya, nasira yung zipper ng pantalon niya. So, ako ngayon sabi, nakakaya, <laughs> nabukas yung zipper ko. So, tinatry niya itago ng, ng coat niya, kaso nga lang, problema yung coat niya, medyo maikse, 
So kaya nagkaroon siya ng paraan. Nanghiram siya ng pamaypay doon sa isa namin kaibigan. So yung kaisa kong kaibigan, binigyan siyang pamaypay. So the whole time, sa kasal, na, na, nakaganoon na siya, nakatakip doon sa kanyang zipper. And ito ang malupit. Ang problema ito, yung palang mantalo niya, kaya pala nasira yung zipper. Kasi masikip na. So, nung pag-upo niya ngayon, doon sa pew ng simbahan, pag-upo niya, <laughs> punit sa may puwitan. So ngayon, ang laki ng problema niya, bukas yung zipper niya sa harap, wak-wak yung pantalon niya sa likuran. So hindi niya ngayon alam alam kung anong gagawin, sa, sa, sa niya ilalagay yung, yung, yung pamaypay sa harap ba o sa likod. So sabi ko sa kanya, pare, isa lang ang solusyon dyan. Sabi ko sa kanya, pare, takpan mo na lang ng pamaypay yung mukha mo para hindi ka nila makilala. <laughs> Why am I sharing this to you, my dear friends? Kasi, bakit ba tayo nagmamaskara? Nagmamaskara tayo kapag meron tayong tinatago na hindi maganda. Nagmamaskara tayo para mas maging uh, mas kaaya-aya, mas presentable yung muka, yung itsura natin sa ibang tao. And the truth is this, my dear brothers and sisters, we all wear masks to make us look good, para mas presentable, para hindi makita ng ibang tao yung mali sa atin. Kasi may tinatago nga tayo, may gusto tayo pagtakpan. Pero ito ang malupit. Minsan, ang ginagamit nating maskara is criticism. What do I mean with this? Sa sobrang pagtatago natin, dahil ayaw natin makita yung baho natin, the worst thing that we did is, we do is this. To make us look good, we try to compare ourselves with other people who we think are worse than ourselves. Yung mga feeling mong tao mas malala sa'yo, yun ang gagamitin mo para, pa, para matakpan yung, yung, yung baho mo. Ano sinasabi natin? Minsan sinasabi natin ito, oo, hindi ako perfecto, pero at least, hindi ako tulad ng iba dyan, di ba? Para naalala ka, kita ka isang tweet na ito, sabi niya, alam niyo, hindi ako, ma- hindi ako mahilig, buti na lang, hindi ako mahilig magparinig, hindi ka tulad ng iba dyan. <laughs> di ba, ganyan tayo. We love to compare ourselves to criminals, to murderers, to rapists, to corrupt politicians, and we say, buti na lang, hindi ako katulad nila. Malala yung mga yun. And I think that's what the ancient Jews were doing. They labeled the Gentile cities of Tyre, Sidon, and Sodom as bad and labeled themselves as good. Sila masama, kami mabuti. And the problem with this is this. In the process of them comparing themselves to worse people, to badder people than them, they didn't see their own evil. Hindi nila nakita yung sarili nilang problema. Naalala ko one time, alam nyo, madalas mangyari sa akin ito eh, yung, yung, yung nasa traffic ka, tapos merong kakatok sa'yo, tapos sasabihin, kuya, pem, pembar yan. Pem yan. So ako, bin, one time, binigyan ko siya ng 10 pesos. Ngayon, meron tumatakbo bata na sa likod niya. Apparently, kapatid pala niya ito. Sabi niya, kuya, kuya, ako naman. Pengin naman akong barya, pem barya. Sabi ko sa kanya, wala na akong barya. Yan, 10 pesos. Hati na lang kayo. Alam mo, nagulat ako yung, yung dalawang bata. Yung nasa likod, sabi niya, akin na, pengin ko yan, akin na yan, akin na yan. Ayaw ibigay ng isang bata. Ang ginawa ng kuya niya, bihin na tuwo ka siya. Sabi ko sa kanya, hati tayo, akin na yan. Alam niyo? Pagsara ko ng bintana, I was saying, sabi ko, grabe yung dalawang bata mo, magkapatid na nga, nagdadamutan pa, naggugulangan pa, ang sarap paguntugin. And that was me trying to, to, trying to look, at, look down at them. At hinuhusga ko, grabe, damat nun. No? Pero alam nyo, minsan, na-realize ko, ganun din naman ako. E eh, paano ko nasabi yan? Minsan, may tendency din ako maging madamot. Lalo na sa amin, every Sunday kami pamilya, nag-gather kami uh, kasama ng mga kapatid ko. Tapos pag kami cake dyan, ay naku, gusto ko akin yung pinakamalaking slice. At hindi lang yung pinakamalaking slice. Gusto ko pati yung, pati yung dumikit na cake dun sa kutsilyo, kinukuha ko pati yun. Bakit? <laughs> gusto ko ako yung nakakalamang. And you see my dear friends, why am I sharing this to you? Minsan, ganyan ang tendency natin. In our effort to look down on other people, thinking that we are better than them, we fail to see our own evil. 
hindi natin nakikita yung sarili natin pagkakamali, yung sarili natin baho. Kasi wala tayong ibang itatupag kundi tingnan kung ano yung mali sa mga kaibigan natin, sa mga tao na sa paligid natin. And today, my dear friends, that's what I urge you to do. Today, I want you to remove your masks. I want you to humble yourselves before God and let God point out your weaknesses. Let God point out your sins, yung mga bagay na dapat mong baguhin sa sarili mo. Amen? Remove your masks. Magpakatotoo ka. Huwag kang mahihirap ipakita ang baho, ang tunay na ikaw. Amen? That's the first thing that Jesus is calling them to do. The second thing that Jesus is calling us to do and calling Chorus in Bethsaida and Capernaum to do is this. Jesus is calling them to not play God. Don't play God. Just don't. Sabi nga, ni, sabi nga ni Kuya Bimbi. Di ba? No. Di ba? Don't. Eddie, eh, don't. Di ba? To explain this, I need to give you a little geography and history lesson. Bakit don't play God? Uh, alam nyo, itong Corazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, yung tatlong yan, they were fishing villages along the Sea of Galilee. So, ito yung Sea of Galilee, halimbawa. Tapos, ito yung Corazin, Bethsaida, tsaka Capernaum, nasa gilid siya ng Sea of Galilee. And then, sa likod nitong kap- ng Corazin, Bethsaida, at Capernaum, merong isang mountain dyan. It was called Mount Arbel. And ano itong Mount Arbel na ito? History lesson lang ha? Mount Arbel is actually one of the headquarters of a Jewish rebel movement called Zealots. Ayan. Sino itong mga Zealots na ito? The Zealots had only one goal. Itong mga Zealots na ito, makukumpara natin siya sa ngayon para silang mga NPA, mga rebelde. And they had only one goal. They want to kick out the Roman government, the Roman oppressors. And here's the problem. They want to kick out the Roman gover- government and the oppressors and they are going to do anything and everything, even massacre, even to kill, even violence to make it happen. And so, dito sa Mount Arbel na ito, dito tinatago ng mga zilots yung mga weapons nila at yung mga pera nila dun sa mga kuweba ng Mount Arbel. And the thing is this, yung three towns na Corazin, Bethsaida, at Capernaum, Diyan yung mga lugar na kung saan sila nagre-recruit ng mga kasama nila sa rebellion army na, na mag incite ng violent revolution. Now, here's what happened. Later on, Jesus shows up in these towns and tell them, stop playing God. There's another way. Alam natin, kalaban natin yung mga Roman government, yung oppressors. But Jesus said, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. If someone hits you on the right cheek, give him your left. And Jesus' message was too insane. Para bagang, imposible yan, hindi ka tanggap-tanggap yan. That's why itong mga Jewish people na ito, hindi sila nakinig kay Jesus. Ayaw nila nun. Why? Because these zealots, they wanted to take matters into their own hands. They wanted the path of violence rather than the path of love. At alam niyo kung anong nangyari? Tutuloy ko lang yung history lesson, ha? 30 years after, 70 AD, 30 years after namatay si Jesus, around 70 AD, Roman General Titus and his armies totally destroyed Jerusalem. Pero ang sinasabi ng mga historians, hindi talaga si General Titus ang nagpabagsak ng Jerusalem. Naging, it was just the final nail in the coffin. Kasi ang may kasalanan talaga bakit nasira itong Jerusalem is the zealots. Because it was the zealots who destroyed Jerusalem from within. Kasi anong ginagawa ng mga zealots? Yung mga hudyo na hindi ayaw, ayaw sumapi sa kanilang army, sa kanilang rebellion, pinapatay nila yung mga Jewish leaders na yon. And ang nangyari, dahil pinapatay nila yon, nagkaroon ng civil war. It was Jews killing other Jews. And because of that, that prepared the destruction of Jerusalem. That what happened? Violence begets violence. And it led to their destruction. Yun ang kinasira nila. Now, anong significance nito sa buhay natin ngayon? Uh, let me share to you another story. Alam nyo, nung two weeks ago, yung, yung anak ko, si Zion, uh, ano siya, three and a half years old, medyo pushy na. Yung nagtatry na siya maging independent. 
and when we were having dinner, umiinom siya ng buko juice. Tapos ang sinasabi ko sa kanya, ako na, anak, oh, ako na magpapainom sa'yo ng buko juice, hawakan mo yung baso ng maigi. Itong anak kong si Zayo, nag-feeling independent, nagyayabak. Ano sabi niya, Daddy, ako na, ako na, ako na ang bahala. So, ngayon, inagaw niya sa akin yung buko juice. Ang ending, pag-agaw niya sa akin ng buko juice, nung iniinom niya, natapon yung buko juice, napagalitan ko siya. Tapos, punong-puno ng buko juice yung kanyang damit. Tapos sabi niya, Daddy, ang lagkit. Nainis din siya. Oh, what, what, why am I sharing this to you, my dear friends? This is what happens when you take matters into your own hands. This is what happens kapag mas nagmamarunong ka pa sa Diyos. Kasi pag nagmarunong tayo sa Diyos, when we take matters into our own hands, yan pa minsan na magiging cause ng pagkasira at destruction natin. Kapatid, kaibigan, friend, are you playing God? Mas marunong ka pa ba sa Diyos? Ay nako, let me tell you this. Hindi bagay sa iyo yun. Kasi ang bagay sa iyo, yung pagsunod sa kagustuhan ng Diyos. Surrender to God. Follow God's will. Amen? The first one is, remove your mask. The second is, don't play God. The third thing is this. But before I give you the third thing that God calls us to do, let me repeat God's one big message for you today. God's one big message for you today is this. Your burden fits you well. Again, sa Tagalog, bagay sa iyo ang pinapasan mo, ang pasanin mo. Alam ko parang hindi masyadong inspiring yung naririnig ninyo ngayon. Pero pagkatiwalaan nyo lang ako dito, this may be the most inspiring thing you have heard in a long time. Now, let's review again. Si Jesus, He wanted Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum to do three things. The first is remove your masks. The second is to don't play God. And here's the third one that God wants us to do. And here it is. Get real rest. Bakit? In Matthew 11:28, let's move forward. Anong sabi ni Jesus? Sabi ni Jesus, Come to me, all of you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Sounds familiar? Yan yung famous na kanta na, uh, And he said, cast your burdens upon me. Hindi ba? Come to me, all of you who are tired of carrying heavy loads. Yan. Yan yung kanta ngayon. And yan yung sinabi niya. Punta ka daw kay Lord, kung napapagod ka na, and God will give you rest. I have two questions for you now. Question number one is this. What is the heaviest burden in the world? Anong pinakamabigat na burden sa mundo? Alam nyo kung ano? Here's the answer. The heaviest burden in the world is when you are taking matters into your own hands. Kapag when you are playing God, when you are defining good and bad in your own terms, kapag pinapasan mo ang daigdig, ayan, di ba? Question number two is this. What is the greatest rest you can ever have? Ito yung kabaligtaran ng isa. The answer is this. The greatest rest that you can have is when you are taking matters into God's hands. Alam mo, kapatid, kung ikaw ay stressed, kung ikaw ay pagod, kung ikaw ay burnt out, alam mo kung bakit ka laging stressed at bakit ka laging pagod? Kasi, alam mo ang sagot ito, kasi ang linyahan mo palagi, pasag ko ang daigdig. In other words, kinakarga mo, sinasalo mo, lahat ng problema, na tanging ang Diyos lamang ang makakaayos at makakapagbigay ng solusyon. That's why my recommendation for you today is this, and that's Jesus' recommendation as well. That instead of taking matters into your own hands, imbis na pasanin mo ang daigdig, why don't you take matters into God's hands? Lagi mo sa kamay ng Diyos. Pagkatiwalaan mo siya. Isurrender mo ang lahat sa Kanya. And the wonderful thing about it is this. Jesus explained it this way. Sabi ni Jesus, right after he said, I will give you rest, he said something peculiar. May kakaiba siyang sinabi. Hindi sinabi ni Jesus na, I will give you rest. Magbakasyon ka. Drop everything. Huwag ka magtrabaho. Magpunta ka sa burakay. Magpamasahe ka. Hindi sinabi ni Lord na yun ang tunay na rest. No. Instead, Jesus, when he said, I will give you rest, ang kasunod doon, ang sabi niya, take my yoke upon you. Matthew 11:28 to 29 sabi niya, 
Take my yoke upon you. Ngayon ang tanong ito, what is a yoke? Alam nyo kung ano yung yoke? Yan yung nasa gitna ng itlog. Yoke. And then, biro lang, yoke yun, Y-O-L-K, yung pula ng itlog. Hindi yun, hindi egg yoke. Yoke is this. Pakita ko sa inyo ang picture ng yoke. Ito yan. Ito. Pakita natin sa screen. Ayan. That is a yoke. Ano yung yoke? Pansinin nyo, it's a wooden um, sculpture, uh, kinarv, hinulma. And yoke is that wooden crossbar that is carried by two oxen, dalawang baka, o kaya dalawang hayop, together for more efficient plowing. Parang ganyan. Para kapag ka nag-aararo sila, dalawa sila, makakahila nung pang-araro. And take note ha, tingnan nyo yung picture na yan, dalawang baka, tapos merong yoke sa kanilang mga bato, magka-attach yan, and pang magka-attach yan, they, ngayon, yung power nilang dalawa will will equate to to the power of two oxen. Parang dalawa na silang hihila nung, nung araro, nung pang-plow. Now, the key word here is together. And here's what I would like to tell you. Baka kaya ka burnt out. Baka kaya, kaya pagod na pagod sa buhay. Because maybe you are carrying all your burdens without a yoke. Ibig sabihin, kaya ka siguro pagod kasi kinakaya mo lang mag-isa. Kinakaya mo mag-isa yung dapat dalawang tao ang gumagawa, gumagawa. Yung dalawang tao ang bumubuhat. And here's, here's a flash news. Ha? Ito gusto ko sabihin sa inyo. Flash news lang. You are not supposed to carry your burdens alone. Ha? You are not supposed to carry your burden alone. Kaya si Jesus, anong sabi niya? Take my yoke. Pinapasuot ni Jesus yung yoke. Kasi gusto ni Lord na tulungan ka. Kasi alam niya na hindi mo kayang mag-isa. Isn't that beautiful? My dear brothers and sisters, please don't carry your burdens alone. Carry it with Jesus. Carry it with Jesus. I want you to tap yourself on the shoulder. I want you to type it in the comment section. And I would like you to tell yourself, I will never carry my burden alone. God is carrying it with me. Go, go, go. I will never carry my burden alone. God is carrying it with me. Again, I will never carry my burden alone. God is carrying it with me. And my dear friend, that is real rest. When you are actually allowing God to carry your burdens with you. Amen? But that's not all. Ito ha. That's not all. Alam nyo, some people think that rest, pahinga, is not doing anything. Let me tell you this. Let me shock you this ha. Hindi po rest yung wala kang ginagawa. In fact, that's emptiness. That's meaninglessness. That's death. Ay, maniwala kayo sa akin. Alam nyo, nung nag-uumpisa yung quarantine, mga first two weeks ng quarantine, alam nyo, I was restless. Hindi ko alam anong gagawin ko. Bakit? Kasi wala akong talks. Walang, walang, walang feast. So, wala akong ginagawa. So, ang ginagawa ko lang, dito lang ako sa bahay. At alam nyo, naubos yung oras ko, kakalaro ng online games. Games ng games ng games. Ang, ang, ang sinasabi ko, ay, di ba, rest naman ito eh. Quarantine, panahon para magpahinga. But here's what happened. The more that I was addicted to online gaming, laro lang ako ng laro, laro lang ako ng laro, para akong zombie, at umaabot ako ng 3 a.m. Hindi pa rin ako tapos sa paglalaro. Eh, ang, ang sinasabi ko palagi, eh, hindi kasi relaxation ko ito. Pero here's what I noticed. The more na naaadik ako sa online gaming at pananood ng Netflix, alam nyo, nare-realize ko, teka lang, bakit parang mas restless ako? Bakit parang mas pagod na ako? Yun pala, ang problema ko, is not that I have so much work. Here's what, here's what I've realized. You don't get drained because of too much work. You get drained because you lack two things. Because you lack purpose and relationship. Like, banggit ko na ito dati, pleasure, watching K-drama, watching Netflix, uh, playing games, relaxing. Lahat yan, masarap yan. Eh, but let me tell you this, pleasure without purpose 
is pointless. Hindi pwedeng puro sarap na. Hindi pwedeng wala kang ginagawa. Kasi pag wala kang ginagawa, mas nakakapagod yun. And let me preach this powerful truth to you. Real rest is carrying, it, it, it's not, it's not doing, it's not not doing anything. Because real rest is carrying with God your God-assigned burden and surrendering everything else into His hands. Uulitin ko ah, because this is powerful. Real rest is carrying with God your God-assigned burdens and surrendering everything else into His hands. My dear brothers and sisters, let me ask you this question. Are you carrying what God never intended you to carry? Baka kasi meron kang binubuhat na hindi mo naman dapat binubuhat. Kung ikaw ay napapagod, gusto ko sabihin sa iyo ito. Kaya ka minsan napapagod kasi pinapasan mo yung mga bagay na hindi mo naman dapat pinapasan. At ito ang malupit. Pinababayaan mo naman yung mga bagay na dapat mong inaaksyonan. Iyan e tayo eh, di ba? Ang hilig natin problemahin ang problema ng iba. Di ba? A few months ago, ano tayo, medical experts, a few days ago, naging law experts tayo. Tapos last week, nung mayroong pumutok na ano, naging, naging medico-legal tayo. Di ba? Ang dami nating hanas, ang dami nating comment sa iba't ibang mga bagay. Pero ito, ang ilig natin problema ay ang problema ng iba. Comment ng comment sa pagkukulang, sa pagkakamali ng iba. Pero ito nakakalungkot. Yung pinapagawa ng Diyos sa atin, hindi naman natin ginagawa. Kaya tayo restless. Kaya tayo pagod. Kaya tayo burnt out. Kasi we're not doing our God-given burdens. And we are not carrying it with God. Instead, we are carrying burdens that should not be ours in the first place. Am I making sense here? I hope I'm making sense to you. Now, I'm about to end. Huh? After uh, Jesus, after saying, I will give you rest, take my yoke upon you, meron na naman siyang sinabing, ang hirap itindihan, anong sabi ni Jesus? I will give you rest, take my yoke upon you, and then he said, for my yoke is easy. Teka, 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 teka. Parang, Parang, teka lang, bakit ganun? Eh, sinuotan mo na nga ako ng yoke, di ba mabigat yan? Paano naging easy yun? Dinamay mo pa ako dun sa, dun sa pag, paghihila ng burden. What in the world does what in the world does my yoke is easy mean? Alam nyo, sa original Greek translation, the original Greek form of this verse, it literally means my yoke fits well. Ulitin ko ha, my yoke fits well. Ibig sabihin, saktong-sakto sa iyo yung yoke ko. And I want you to remember this, ha? Interesting ito, ha? Si Jesus, anong trabaho niya? Siya ay tagapinta ng kotse. Diba? He was a carpenter. Ay, hindi pala, carpenter pala. Si Jesus, carpintero. And his primary trade was making farming tools. Yan ang pinagkakakitaan ni Jesus. And I want you to imagine Jesus Siguro sa kanyang sa kanyang shop, merong sa carpentry shop niya merong merong signage doon. Uh, sa akin kayo magpagawa ng yoke because my yoke fits well. Yun ang kanyang tagline siguro. Yun ang kanyang advertising. But because take note ha, kapag carpentero ka, pwede mong i-customize yung yoke. Kasi in ancient times, you don't buy a yoke na para kang bumibili sa Shopee at sa Lazada na one size fits all. No. Pag bumibili ka ng yoke para sa hayop mo, para kang bumibili ng coat and tie, para kang bumibili ng suit sa, sa sastre, sa tailor. Anong gagawin mo? Yung baka mo, yung hayop mo, dadalhin mo dun sa kar- karpintero, tapos yung karpintero, imimesyo yung kanyang, yung kanyang bato, yung kanyang leeg, yung kanyang balikan. Tapos pag sinukat yon, ay nako, dun niya ibabase kung ano, gano'ng kalaki, anong itsura, anong dimensions nung yoke na gagawin niya. And sig- na-imagine ko to siguro kung ikaw yung baka, di ba, pupunta ka doon. Kay Jesus, doon sa karpintero. Tapos habang sinusukatan ka niya, tapos pagsukat sa'yo, ay parang ang sikip na itong yoke na ito. Kung ikaw yung baka, siguro nang sasabihin mo, ay siguro kailangan mo bumayik sa low carb intermittent fasting ko. Kailangan mo mag-exercise kasi masikip na. Ganun, tinitailor fit sa, sa leeg. Kasi hindi dapat sumasayan at kumakas ka sa balikat o sa batok ng baka. Dapat sakto 
ang sukat. Now, what is Jesus trying to tell us? Jesus is trying to tell us, do you want real rest? Follow me. Because following me will fit you well. Sa Tagalog, bagay ang pagsunod mo sa akin sa iyo. Bagay ako sa iyo. And kapag sinunod mo yung kagustuhan ni Lord sa iyo, oo, oh, mahirap, pero bagay sa iyo. Oo, oh, ang, ang hira para, pero pero kakayanin mo. Kasi nakaakma. Para sa iyo talaga yung burden na yan. Para sa iyo talaga yung yoke na yan. Am I making sense here? Because following Jesus and following His will fits you well. Jesus fits you well. Bagay na bagay si Jesus sa iyo. Amen? Now let me end with one last story. Okay lang ba? I, I would like to remove my mask today and share to you what I have gone through for the past, uh, in the last quarter of 2020. Alam nyo, 2020 has been a tough year for all of us. It has also been tough, a tough year for me. And because of 2020, I had, uh, dahil nabawasan yung corporate talks ko, na wala pa, na hindi masyado marami yung nag-hire sa akin for webinars. So I had to find a way. And by God's grace, I had a new business. Yung nakwento ko na sa inyo kanina, I mean to uh, car, buy and sell, nagbibid sa bank mo, repossess bank. And it's taking so, so much of my time. And because it was taking so much of my time, ito yun eh, madagdagan yung oras na, na kailangan ko sa buhay ko kasi meron ako responsibility sa bagong negosyo ko. Pero, there's still so much on my plate. Hindi naman tatay pa rin ako, asawa pa rin ako. In fact, tatay na ako ng dalawa pang, ng dalawang bata kasi nadagdagay yung anak ko. So, bagong responsibilidad na naman. Aside from that, I'm still a feast builder. I, I need to take care of you, to take care of the servants. Ang dami kong inaasika. So, and then, aside from that, I'm also a business owner nung, nung aking Facebook, uh, nung aking corporate, uh, tawag ito, nung aking corporate webinars and seminars. Tapos, meron akong buy and sell na negosyo. Tapos, ito pa, I have a Facebook page and last year, two years, sorry, two years ago, I started posting videos. Tapos, I spoke post inspirational quotes there. And in my Facebook page, I have 400,000 followers. So, a lot is in my plate. Sa Facebook page ko, ang dami pang nagbe-message, nangihingi ng advice. Tapos, merong, merong pang, merong pang, nagtatanong sa akin, Brother Velvin, kailan ka ba mag, magpapalabas ulit ng video? Hinihintay ko na yung videos mo. I receive tons of messages like that every day. So, at the last quarter of 2020, I was so overwhelmed. Hindi ko na alam ko anong uunahin ko. And it has taken a toll on my sanity and, and my peace. And hindi ko na alam yung gagawin ko. Nababurn out na ata ako. In fact, um, there were nights when I, I'm crying, literally crying, because I'm so overwhelmed. I just want to quit. <laughs> quit. I just want to quit one one aspect. I, I want, in fact, I even thought of thinking of quitting yung aking negosyo na buy and sell, even if it, it feeds my family. Pero na-realize ko, hindi ko pwede i-quit ito. Pag kinuit ko ito, paano na magkakain yung pamilya ko? So, I, I have so much in my head. And then, I thought, teka lang, sa mga responsibilidad ko, ano ba pwede kong bitawan? Hindi ko pwedeng bitawan yung pagiging asawa ko, eh, sinumpaan ko yung sa Diyos. Hindi ko pwedeng bitawan yung pagiging tatay ko, eh, lalo yun, dalawa na yung anak ko. Hindi ko pwedeng bitawan yung ministry ko. God called me into this ministry, becoming a feast builder, and not everyone is called to be a feast builder. This is a privilege by God for me. This is my calling. Hindi ko rin mabitawan yung Yung, yung calling ni Lord sa akin na, na, na to become a positive inspiration, an inspirational speaker in my Facebook page. Hindi ko mabitawan yan. Uh, ano pa, pero hindi ko rin mabitawan yung buy and sell na business ko kasi yun ang nagpo-provide para sa family ko. So what to do? I was discerning and discerning. discerning. I was overwhelmed and I thought I needed to drop one. But later on, as I prayed to the Lord and as I discerned, 
God told me that maybe you don't need to drop one. Because when I was thinking about it, God aligned everything in my life so as for me to be called to be a father, to be a husband, to be a business owner, to be a, a, an influencer on Facebook with 400,000 followers, to, to be a feast builder. In align ni Lord yan lahat para sa akin. So somehow, I knew in my heart that quitting is in, in one of those is not the solution. Kasi inisip ko pa lang, kung meron akong i-drop, halimbawa, i-drop ko yung pagiging asawa ko, abay, mas lalong mabigat yun sa puso ko. Dinrap ko yung pagiging tatay ko, eh, mabigat yun, hindi ko kaya yun. Mas magiging burden yun sa akin. Kung i-drop ko naman yung buy and sell business ko, mabigat yun. Paano ko papakinin yung pamilya ko? Kung i-drop ko yung ministry ko, yung pagiging face builder ko, ay, hindi kaya ng konsensya ko yun. Mahal na mahal ko kayo. It's more of a burden for me. Kung i-drop ko din yung mga taong nagpo-follow sa akin sa Facebook, hindi ko napansin na yung Facebook page ko, mabigat din yun because people are banking on what I post on social media. And dropping it seems to be, dropping one of those things seems to be more of a burden because I believe God has appointed me and called me to do those roles. But thank God, no Christmas break, I went, to a dear friend of mine, our founder, Brother Bo Sanchez. Nagdala lang ako ng aking, ano, um, tawag dito, Christmas gift. Tapos, andun kami sa labas ng bahay niya. And then, kinamusta niya ako, kamusta na ako, how's, how's my business, how's my life, how's my ministry. And then I told him, sabi ko na, Brother Bo, I'm overwhelmed. And in fact, I'm thinking of quitting my business. And I'm thinking of trying to streamline my schedule. And then, here's what he said. Alam niya si Lord, nagpapadala talaga siya ng tao eh, na kailangan, pagkakailangan mo ng salita niya. Sabi ni Brother Bo sa akin, sabi niya, Belden, sabi niya, you know what? I want you to understand that this is just a season. Your ministry is growing bigger, your family is growing bigger, and then your business is, your new business is just growing bigger. Sabi niya, this is not the time to quit. Sabi niya, this is just a season. And kapag ka season na yan, there will be sleepless nights, nights. Pero this will this will just be a season. Soon, sooner or later, you will find your balance, and you will eventually find your balance. Nagka transition ko pa. Tapos ito suggestion na sa akin. But here's what I would like you to do. Sabi niya, you need to find and ask and hire people to do things that you can delegate, so that you can do things that only you can do. So you can do things that God has called you to do. For example, sabi niya, halimbawa yung paperwork, pwedeng ibang tao na yung gumawa niyan. Pero yung, yung preaching mo, yung, yung giving out content on social media, ikaw lang ang pwedeng gumawa niyan. Yung editing, hindi mo kaya gawin niyan, ipagawa mo na sa iba. Eh, yung yung, yung daming mga bagay na pwedeng mong ipagawa sa iba. But you can never be a substitute. You can never find another substitute to be a husband. You can never find a substitute to be a father to your kids. And so, upon his recommendation and suggestion, I started hiring new people for my businesses. I was tapping new people for our buy, buy and sell business. I'm tapping people to edit my videos. Again, shout out to Yabi Eusebio. Ayan, I, I, I tap people who can upload my videos on my YouTube and my, my Facebook page. And ako, I, I asked help from my family members. Humingi na ako ng tulong sa asawa ko. Sabi sa kanya, love, kailangan kong, kailangan kong mas magtrabaho. So, uh, uh, kung po pwede, tulungan mo ako sa, sa bahay. Mais ng konti yung burdens ko, sa responsibility sa bahay. And I thank God for a wife who constantly does that. Eases my burdens and responsibilities at home. So I can focus more on my business and businesses and my ministry. Thank you rin sa mga kapatid ko at nanay at tatay ko na inaalagaan yung mga anak ko kapag nag-date kami mag-asawa because I need to, 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 to keep our marriage intact. So every Wednesday, iniiwan ko yung anak ko, si Zion sa, sa, sa nanay at tatay ko. Sila nagbabatay doon para naman maging asawa ko sa asawa ko. And most of all, I'd like to thank all those leaders and servants of Feast Bikutan who are helping me do this. Mahira po itong Feast at home. Uh, despite the pandemic, you are still there. Uh, I, I'm 
the business is uh, sorry the the feast is running the ministry is running because you are helping me and you know what why am i sharing this to you my dear brothers and sisters because i realized i was burnt out kasi sinusubukan kong pasanin ang big pick eh hindi ko na kaya at higit sa lahat hindi naman ako pinatawag ng Diyos pasanin ang lahat My dear friends, why am I sharing this to you? Are you burdened right now? Maybe God is asking you to share that burden to others. Maybe God is asking you to let Him in and allow Him to carry that burden. I don't know what you are going through right now, my dear friends. Maybe you have a huge responsibility. A husband, a wife, a business owner, a leader in the ministry. I don't know. But let me tell you this. Oh, oh, mahirap. Yes, it may be a burden. But come to think of it, our burdens is also the source of our joy. Tama ba? Because I know that God has called me to do it. In fact, I call this a happy burden. My marriage is a happy burden. Minsan, source ng stress ko yung misis ko. Pero almost siya rin ang source ng joy ko. Hinahanap-hanap ko pa rin siya. Parenthood is a happy burden. Ang, 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 ang kukulit minsan ng mga anak ko. Gusto ko pang kutugin minsan. Pero at the end of the day, lalo na pagtulog sila. Ay, naku, they are the source of my joy. It's my happy burden. Ministry, there are so many problems in the ministry. It's a happy burden. Because, because, I get my joy as well in serving others, in serving the Lord. Work in business is a happy burden as well. My dear friends, why am I sharing this, this to you? Yes, when you have a happy burden, and you look at it as a happy burden, yes, pwedeng pagod ke. You may be tired at the end of the day, but you're happy. You're happy. And here's the truth that I'd like to tell you, my dear friends. The reason many people are not happy today is because they have no happy burdens to carry. What's your happy burden? If you have a happy burden, please embrace it and carry it lovingly because that is what God is calling you to carry. Kapatid, nahihirapan ka na ba? Nabibigatan ka na ba? Napapagod ka na ba? I want you to go back to your purpose. I want you to go back to the day that God called you to be a husband. I want you to go back to the day that God called you to be a wife, to be a father, to be a mother, to be a leader to that job, to your business. Because God called you there because He believes you can. Kaya mo. Because that burden is from the Lord. And your burden fits you well. Bagay sa iyo ang pinapasan mo. Alam ko mahirap. Pero alam ng Diyos na kaya mo 'yan. Kaya mo rin 'yan. Kaya wag kang susuko kasi tinawag ka niya diyan. And I believe in this. When God appoints, he anoints. And if God called you to it, he will bring you through it. Amen. Get real rest. Your burden fills you well. Amen.